Mr. P-Man, welcome to players. Easy. Come on. Players, people. How'd you say good time, man? Uh, very, uh, uh, sweaty. Yeah, absolute fucking sweat box. I can't, I can't swear, can I? Um, but yeah, it was good. Good to come to Bedford. Um, I was in Cambridge a few weeks ago and there was a lot of Bedford crew there saying, when are you going to get to Bedford? And so I finally, finally got here and it was good. It seemed to be well up there. Cool, man. Cool. What do you think too, about, about the sort of the sound in this place and in other places? Oh, it's, it's, oh, t- it's typical for this. Sorry. Try again. I don't know where they've gone. They're just in the toilet freshening up. Yeah, right. <laughs> what do you think about the sound in this club? Uh, the sound in this club is typical of venues this size. It's, it's decent, decent enough. I mean, for a 300 capacity venue, the sound was was probably above what you'd be able to get into a room that size. But it was good, nonetheless. You can never have too much. Oh, um, would you ever consider like building your own rig, like Dylan did with Valve, just just literally just to make your chins oh, sorry, guys, sound right. best they possibly could? Um, well, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, because we, we, we're really, really, really into Function 1 sound, because we've been into turbo sounds when we were more younger, as far as bands are concerned, and they've always really come through with their systems. So I don't think we'd need to build one. I mean, they've got, they've got it all covered, that's what they're there for. So, I mean, you wouldn't... But I know what you're saying. I mean, drum and bass needs to be... It, had, it, it demands a certain size of system to get a certain level of energy. It doesn't even need to be full volume. It's just a certain level of energy that you get out of large systems. So I know what you mean. So, so if I could just manipulate the question. Basically, <laughs> if we could always play on, on a system that we spe- specified, then yeah, that'd be perfect. We wouldn't need to build our own system. Cool. Thinking of um, maybe put, doing a surround sound thing. So... Um, Five point one surround. What's this? My hat's going. That's cool. Um, sort of to add to that, then, uh, do you have like a, like a favourite venue with like an inbuilt sound system, rather than like the raves or anything like that, where someone provides one? Uh, you can't go past the end. That's that's that can even be over. The end is just hammering, hammering sound system. Fabric is always just amazing. Um, and then. Um, I've, done, I've done a lot of university shows, and they always bring in such huge fucking sound systems, and it's really, really good. It's like, and they're always functional on systems, so yeah, it's good. That's cool. Uh, moving on then, um, which of your tunes have sold the most copies? Uh, Another Planet. Yeah? Um, I don't have to quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure Another Planet is still number one on Chemical Records and stuff like that. Cool. Do you have like a particular? Actually, the album I think we've done the most. The albums, yeah, the albums done the most. But as far as singles are concerned, another planet. Do you have like a particular tune that you're most proud of? That sort of every time you play it out, you know you're going to get that reaction from it. Well, there's tunes that I'm particularly proud of, and then there's tunes that I know will always get a reaction. But one that falls into both categories, I guess, is Tarantula and Slam, Another Planet. Those are the three big ones. Basically, the progression went from Vault, we sort of tried to better ourselves with another planet, and from another planet, we tried to better ourselves with Slam. So those three big ones, definitely. Cool. Um, five years ago, did you think you were going to be where you are now? No, not at all. Um, I mean, not not to say that it fell in our lap without hard work, but because, I mean, it takes a long time for us to finish these tunes and get them right. But it's been a very pleasant sort of surprise to get to get the sort of recognition that we've got just all over the world. It's amazing. Cool. To kind of go back to like the sound system thing, like the 5.1, because it sounds like you're doing something different. Would you ever consider doing a live show? We've got a live show underway, so it's, it's nearly ready. Hoping to have it ready by mid 2006, so mid this mid this year, and um, yeah, we're hoping to hit the festivals and stuff like that. Cool. And, um, Go back to your tunes again. You've done your kind of more renowned, as well as your own tunes, for doing remixes for people, stuff like Bacteria, Voodoo People. Um, have you got any more in the pipeline coming up? Actually, no. Yeah. Um, we've been really... Because, I don't know, there was this one point in 2005 where we just, you know, we'd have a look on One Extra and Radio One and stuff like that, and we had, like, more than three tunes in the charts, but they were all remixes, and we went, hold on a minute, we've got to start working on our album again. And so we had to sort of get back to our own sort of stuff and, and start putting out tunes from us. We were basically just turning into a bit of a... a remix band. A remix pony, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Have you got any particular producers you really, really admire? 
Uh, in drum and bass, I'm really, really feeling naturally, you know, TC, noisier, evil intent, sub focus. Um, Dillinger, when, when he does put stuff out recently, he's just fucking just amazing. You know? I, just, I saw him the other night at Fabric, played after him, and I didn't even want to play because he's, the tunes he put out. It was great, so. Yeah. Yeah. I flaked out by that part. Oh, that's great. Right. Yeah. Bass, amazing. Oh, man. It's great. It's good. I mean, if anyone is doing something good, sorry, then we're in it, basically. I mean, that um, Lime Wax guy from, from the Netherlands, I think? Yeah, with SPL. He's 18 years old, and he's oh, absolute mad, man. He's going to come right through. State of Mind from New Zealand. Keep an eye out for them. They're coming through on BC Recordings. I believe it's BC Recordings. Cool. How do you feel about the, some of the criticism that you get on the NAF? Uh, oh, it, it, Apparently it comes with the with the job, so you just go ignore it. I mean, I don't I don't read forums. I mean, anyone anyone out there that, that knows the three of us would would know that I'm I'm the one that doesn't post on forums. The other two kind of do sometimes, but um, I just can't read it. I just get really annoyed. So it, it does. we do because we do try really hard at what we do, and 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 if someone doesn't like something just because they don't like it, that's fair enough. But to go on and on about it just because. It's almost like they're, they're not, they're not, they don't particularly hate us, they just hate the people that like us, because, I don't know, it's not, it's not cool to like something that's, that everyone else does. What do you it's cool think, to hate. <laughs> um, what do you think, then, that you provoke so much um, just controversy on the internet? Uh, I think primarily it stemmed from us getting crossover appeal, because drum and bass is really... You know, the roots of it is underground and you know, it's all about just sort of holding that really underground party fire that sort of spilled over from the rave era. So I guess we need to not appear to be selling out so much. I mean, but we didn't. We just make drum and bass tracks, you know what I mean? But when they when they get a lot of attention with, you know... I think the, the, the good analogy was there's this one guy who was really into us and he posted on some forum saying that now his, his 12-year-old sister is into us. He didn't like us anymore. So and that's where the crossover appeal hits a different audience and you, you start getting people thinking that you know, you, you're passing and not cool anymore. Um, can you make more tunes like Still Great, please? Yeah, we're always we're always going to try and stretch to every single, I guess, I guess subgenre and style of drum and bass when we do our albums because we like all, we like it all, man. all of it. Cool. Um, what, in your opinion, then, are the advantages and disadvantages of being signed exclusively to a label? Because, I mean, you've got, obviously, yourself on Spread with Chaos, yeah. Soft Focus with Ram, and now G-Dub with Ganja. Yeah. What, what are your kind of opinions on the advantages and disadvantages of it? We've got, we've got no complaints. I mean, you know, it's, it's a family, so then they look after you really well. And um, we've often said, I don't think we could have had as much success as we've had with this particular album if we weren't, you know with Break Big Chaos because they, they did a really good job with it but I mean we're not we're not that exclusive I mean, we have we're allowed we were, we were allowed to do remixes for everyone in the scene like we did before and um I don't know I think drum and bass is kind of relaxed so even exclusivity deals they are kind of chilled because everyone's mates and that sort of thing so it blurs the lines a little you played tonight pretty much entirely off CDs. Yep. Do you prefer CD generally to vinyl? Um, I like either. Uh, vinyl. Um, well, you, when you when you get a crap when you get a crap setup or a crap venue, having vinyl can sometimes really complicate it. But in, in other times, it's just vinyl is just so much so much louder than the CDs. But the only reason I'm using CDs tonight is because we've just split all three of us. One's in Australia, one's in Austria, and um, Rob has all the place we've got left. But another thing is being able just to afford to cut three sets of plays, because we get a lot of new music, we make a lot of new music, so sometimes I just completely on CD and sometimes a mixture. Do you go through a lot of tracks that you get sent sort of via AIM and things? Or something? Yeah, I mean... We're kind of elusive people. We're hard to get hold of as far as the aim and the internet and email is concerned. But we do listen to everything we're given, definitely. Cool. What are then are your opinions on sort of MP3 piracy and bet torrents? And um, I, I don't think you can stop it. So, I mean, I, I'd, I'd be lying if I said I've never downloaded any MP3 albums when I was younger. Um, yeah, I mean, well. From my perspective, when I really liked something, I went out then and I went out and bought the CD because I wanted the, I wanted the inlay and I wanted the artwork and the whole package that is an album. So 
I think a lot of people are like that as well. Um, any chance of processing snares differently and changing your synth presets? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Processing our snares differently. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, mate. It's a new drum kit every single time. Yeah. It may, it may, it may sound similar, but it's just because we've squeezed every available frequency of, of power out of out of every single sort of hit and break. I guess that's so. What you're saying is that they sound pretty similar. A lot, yeah. Uh, the, again, to go back with the criticism on the internet, people say that a lot of your tunes, they all, all the drum kits all sound the same. You always use the sort of the higher pitch synth over the bottom of a really, really oh, for deep the lead sub. Thing. You know, that's yeah. just that just comes back to our musical background. I mean, we're not because we're really musical and from a band background, things need to have a melody instead of a monotonous repeating group like a lot of techie drum and bass does, and that's being confused because our tunes sometimes sound a bit cheeky, that's been confused to just being like cheese and, and clown stuff. But it's not, it's just, it's just a desire to have a melody. That's all we, that, that's, where it, that's where that comes from. Do you think your style of production has changed over the last sort of two or three Definitely. years? Definitely, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's shit to admit it, but when, you did, when we did move, we were definitely influenced by sort of what was current in drum and bass. So that's when we were writing the album, we had to sort of take a step back and stop listening to what was current in drum and bass because it was affecting how we were writing the album. So we had to sort of cut ourselves off from the outside world and just work on tunes organically, the, the sort of the way we did back when we wrote Another Planet and all that. Cool. Um, have you got any particular favourite producers at the moment? Didn't you ask that question? Did I? Yeah. You put it on it twice. <laughs> Whoops. Same, yeah, same here, same question, differently phrased. <laughs> Good looking at it there, but... Um, coming from Australia, sort of, in Perth with the big rock scene, um, how have you found, sort of, going from that to then coming to the drum and bass scene? Because there's, there's, obviously there's going to be some similarities, but then there's going to be big yeah. differences. I mean, a good rock gig, or good metal, heavy metal gig, the venues, you know, it's packed out and people just are as, are ex, as excited as just to, like tonight. That's a good example of what a good rock gig would be like. So I guess they are fairly similar, but I mean, on the whole, for us coming over here, moving country, and then, you know, and, and being thrust right into a scene we'd only just really started getting into, for Rob and myself anyway. I mean, Paul had been into drum and bass for a lot longer, but it was a complete culture shock. I mean, I didn't know what to think. The first gig I went to was Helter Skelter, New Year's 2003, 2004. And I like, just got off the plane from Australia and we, we went straight to the gig in Milton Keynes and I just walked in to see, you know, like 8,000 people with their hands in the air screaming as Andy sees doing a midnight set, dropping another planet. And I just went, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was definitely a culture shock. Cool. Where about the world you most like to play? Um, you, can't beat, you can't beat the, the love we've got in the UK at the moment. And... and Steadily climbing, the love we get in Australia is really good now, back at home. We just recently did two um, Pendulum, all three of us at once, um, back to back set on Boxing Day, and it, they, it sold out in hours, man. It was such a good feeling to fill out like Perth's, one of Perth's best clubs, just to your home crowd, it was wicked. It was a good feeling. Cool. Um, you, compared to a lot of drum and bass artists, you had a fair few singles out pretty quickly but then the album kind of came really quickly whereas I mean some artists take years and years to produce did you feel you needed to? I think um, we didn't I don't know if we needed to but we just we wanted to you know I mean we had the material there and we had a lot of we had a lot of energy there in writing because we were writing all the time Rob was you know sitting in the studio every waking hour just about when we weren't off DJing and stuff, just writing ideas and ideas and ideas. And so we had to put that on something and put it out. And we were signed for an album or two, so we just said, yeah, let's put it out. Speaking of which, you've got another album coming. We do, yes. How long do you reckon? I don't know. I mean, we haven't really started working on it other than... Basically, the way it works with us is we've got just ideas coming all the time and they sort of just go into a pool of, of, of ideas and we just go through and see what's, see what's worth working on and we just go ahead and, and do it and pick the, pick the short list of the tracks for the album and start working on them and then cut it down. So I mean we haven't really started 
working on the second album other than just ideas that we're working on on the road all the time and stuff like that. Are you hoping it will be as, as, as successful, even more successful as Hodge Colour? Hopefully more. But um, I mean, we couldn't we couldn't ask for any more successful than Hodge Colour. It's been great, just especially for what we're considering and what we're expecting. It was really really good. That's cool. Um, going on to the more important questions. Um, are any of your girlfriends fully comprehensive on Sheila's wheels? Um, okay, well, I don't know what that means, but I can guess it's got something to do with women drivers. Yeah, car insurance. Car insurance. <laughs> it's an Australian car insurance, or a British car insurance company set up to be Australian. Are you serious? Called Sheila's Wheels? Yeah. Well, they, they, must, they, they must have a very high levy. <laughs> they even got their own theme tune. Oh, my God, are you serious? Yeah. I was thinking, you know, maybe... I can Remixing that or something, yeah. yeah. Um... Who would win the fight between Jim Robinson and Harold Bishop? Well, I mean, Harold's a heavyweight, so, I mean, he'd, he'd, he'd pack a fair punch, but... Actually, you know what? I reckon Harold would win. Yeah. Uh, when do your visas run out? Um, well, I mean, Paul's on a... Paul's visa's updated uh, very regularly, and Rob and I both got British passports from because of our parents. Oh, so cool. Uh, so well, you can't get me with that you one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... Um, yeah, you can't get so it's interrupt again. Which are the ones that are... Are you really Aussies or are you just putting on the accent for a joke? Uh, yeah, we are born and bred. I mean, um, we've got bits and pieces all over the place. But Paul's, Paul's genuine Aussie. Paul's a few generations Aussie. Um, I'm, my father's Irish and um, I think Rob's parents are South African, but we're, we're born and bred Aussies, you know. Not, not that that's something that means anything. <laughs> it's just where we, our parents had sex. So. And on the same subject, then, what's the most amount of wanks you've had in one sitting? One sitting? Shit, man. I don't know. I think, you know, when... When, when Slam got on the charts, I think it was a pretty heavy one. Just sitting in front of MTV watching. Just couldn't really help myself, so... I know, fair few, mate, fair few. Us Aussies, we don't fucking quit once after one, man. It's, it's, a, it's a heavy session. Cool. Um, who would win the fight between you and Noisier? Me and Noisier? Right. Me, well, me well, on no, my own? No, or the pen, three of us? Pen, yeah, as, as a group. Absolutely flattened. Is <laughs> that a challenge? That's a challenge. I'm laying it down. I'm laying that down. Flatten you. Cool. Um, there's a guy on the drum bass arena forum who was really looking forward to asking you the question: Which variety of cheese is your favourite, and do you have any nightmares after eating it? After eating it? Yeah, yeah. Oh. So if you eat it, go to, go to bed. I mean, I just like you know normal, normal cheese. Like, there's so many fucking cheeses in this country, isn't there? It's like uh, France as well. It's like in Australia, it's just like cheese. That's, that's all it is. But here, there's like all the different. There's like an orange one and. I oh, like all of them. Bit of a cheese man. Cool. Cheers. Thank you very much. Normally we can't do that. Think about it. Because someone took ages over it. Hasn't. Yeah, that's right. Hasn't it's a fucking age over it. Turns it. out he wanted his window back after the car got jacked. His <laughs> car got jacked and his sat nav got nicked outside the club in Luton. Let's go. Okay, so what's the question? If you could be asked any question, what would it be and why? And what's the answer? Okay, um. Uh, okay, what's your phone number? And why? Um, because you've got to be a girl. That's not really why, is it? No one think that again. Um, uh, okay, what question would I like to be asked most? Yeah. I'd like to be asked what question I would like to be asked most. And why? Because it's something to think about and it would it would keep me entertained on the way back to London.